What's up guys? In this video, we are going to cover everything you need to know about one of the most popular breath sounds and that is wheezes. Are you ready? Let's go! If you didn't already know, wheezing is a high-pitched, adventitious breath sound. And adventitious breath sounds, that's just a fancy way of saying abnormal breath sounds. So as a respiratory therapist or medical professional, when you hear wheezing, that is always an abnormal breath sound. Wheezing occurs when there are vibrations of the airway wall that are caused when air flows at a high velocity through a narrowed airway. This is referred to as bronchoconstriction. So what that means is, when air rapidly flows through an obstructive airway, it creates a high-pitched sound that usually occurs on expiration, and that is what we refer to as wheezes. So in order to understand wheezing, you need to know the causes of a reduced airway diameter. Some of the common causes that you will see are bronchospasm, mucosal edema, inflammation, tumors, foreign bodies, and pulmonary edema. As the airways initially start to narrow, there will actually be an increase in the velocity of airflow. This will cause the lateral wall pressure to decrease. And when this decrease in pressure occurs, the lateral walls of the narrowed airway pull closer together and the airflow stops. And when the airflow stops, the lateral wall pressure increases and the airway opens back to the previous position. This cycle continues to repeat itself many times per second and that is exactly what causes the airway walls to vibrate and make the high pitch sound that we hear when a patient is wheezing. So when you have a patient that is wheezing, it's important to listen to the pitch and the duration of the wheezes. So let's say after listening to a patient, you notice a decrease in the pitch and length of the wheezes. This typically means that the patient has shown improvement in their expiratory flow. So here's another example. Let's say you're a respiratory therapist and you've been ordered to provide a bronchodilator breathing treatment for a patient. Before the treatment, you listen to the patient's breath sounds and they are wheezing. Before the treatment, you notice that the wheezes are very high pitched and they are present during the entire expiratory time. But then after the treatment, you notice that the sounds become lower in pitch and they occur only late in the exhalation. At this point, you notice that the pitch and duration of the wheeze have both decreased. This change indicates that the degree of the airway obstruction has decreased and the patient has improved. So now this little tidbit of information is for all my respiratory therapy students out there because this is what you need to remember about wheezes for the TMC exam. So as we've already discussed, wheezing can be caused by bronchospasm. And when this is the case, you should of course recommend a bronchodilator like albuterol. But another thing that you need to be aware of is that you may see a question where a patient has a unilateral wheeze. And when this is the case, it indicates that a foreign body obstruction is present. So with a foreign body, a bronchodilator like albuterol probably isn't going to do any good and it's not going to make the wheezing go away. So instead, you would want to recommend a rigid bronchoscopy. So just for clarification purposes, when there is bilateral wheezing, meaning that wheezing is occurring on both sides of the lungs, that's when you would want to recommend a bronchodilator. And on the other hand, if there is unilateral wheezing, meaning that the wheezing is occurring only on one side of the lungs, this indicates that a foreign body obstruction is present. That's when you would want to recommend a bronchoscopy. And if you're confused, an example of a foreign body obstruction in adults would be a bronchial mass like you would see in a patient with lung cancer. Or in children, it could be that they swallowed an object which is causing a partial obstruction on one side of the lungs, and that is what is causing the unilateral wheeze. And now one more thing to look out for on the TMC exam. So let's say you're assessing a patient that is clearly in respiratory distress, 
but when you listen to their breath sounds, they are diminished. You don't hear any wheezing, but there's just not much air movement going on. So then you continue with the bronchodilator therapy, and after the treatment, you reassess the patient. This time when you listen to their breath sounds, you can hear some audible wheezing going on. Do you know what this means? This actually means that the bronchodilator is working and the airways are actually starting to open up. So a lot of students get that one confused because at first there was no wheezing and then after the treatment there was wheezing. It kind of sounds counterintuitive, but always remember that when a patient is diminished and you give them a breathing treatment and then you hear wheezing, that means that they are actually improving. And if you enjoy little tidbits of information like this concerning the TMC exam, definitely consider checking out our Hacking the TMC exam video course. Because inside of the course, we are sharing all of our best tips, tricks, and insights, and students have been using that information to pass the TMC exam. So if you're interested, I'll drop a link down below in the description. But let's keep moving right along. So you may be wondering specifically what diseases can cause wheezes. So to simplify things, at this time, let's focus on bilateral wheezes. So when there's bilateral wheezes, we know that that is caused by bronchoconstriction. So in other words, there's some type of obstruction going on in the airways. So that means we know that the patient has an obstructive disease. And that brings us to one of my favorite sayings, which is C-Babe. So one of the easiest ways to remember all of the obstructive lung disorders is to use CBABE. So basically all you have to do is take the first letter and that correlates with each obstructive disease. So you have cystic fibrosis, bronchiectasis, asthma, chronic bronchitis, and emphysema. So you would expect a patient with any of these obstructive diseases to have bilateral wheezes. Now let's talk specifically about expiratory wheezing and what is the difference between monophonic and polyphonic wheezes. Expiratory wheezes indicate that there is an obstruction of intrathoracic airways such as occurs with lung diseases like bronchitis and asthma. Wheezing may be monophonic, which means that there is a single note, or polyphonic, which means that there are multiple notes. A monophonic wheeze indicates that a single airway is partially obstructed. Monophonic wheezing may be heard during inhalation and exhalation or during exhalation only. On the other hand, polyphonic wheezing suggests that many airways are obstructed, and this type of wheezing is often seen in patients with asthma. Polyphonic wheezing is only heard during exhalation. So monophonic wheezing may be heard during inhalation or exhalation, whereas polyphonic wheezing is only heard during exhalation. Some other conditions that cause polyphonic wheezing include bronchitis, congestive heart failure, and pulmonary edema. Switching gears just a bit, now would be a good time to talk about strider since technically it is a type of wheezing. Strider is usually caused by an upper airway obstruction. It is often seen in croup, which is subglottic swelling, and is also seen in epiglottitis, which is supraglottic swelling. So since this obstruction is occurring in the upper airway, when you listen to a patient with strider, you're probably going to hear a very recognizable, distinct, high pitch sound. Strider can be treated with cool mist and racemic epinephrine. And in severe cases, the patient may need to be intubated immediately. Alright guys, that pretty much wraps up our video on wheezes. I think we pretty much covered all the important topics, so I hope that you found this information to be helpful. And sorry for jumping around so much, I tend to lose focus every now and then, but hey, what are you supposed to do? I'll drop links to all of our important resources down below in the description, including our full guide on wheezing, and our full guide on all of the other breath sounds as well. And don't forget, if you like the tips that we shared about the TMC exam, definitely check out our Hacking the TMC exam video course, and I'll drop a link to that down below in the description as well. So thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button because it really helps the channel grow. And definitely don't forget to subscribe. That's it for this one, my friends. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video. And as always, breathe easy, my friend.